we're defining the gap. Exactly. Yeah. If this creates a vacuum, right? When the gap is unclear and you haven't done your homework um, to really outline in a system, systematic manner, like here's exactly what's missing right now. And yes, that gap will be evolving. This is why this is very organic. But until you do your homework, this could be very exhaustive. deliver and all their inputs and put them all into an easy to use platform, something that's simple. And, and if uh, we, if we slide into the, the, the crux of your, your challenges, how would you, you know, what is the best statement, uh, to, uh, illustrate what is, uh, kind of keeping you busy right now? Like what's, what's, what's the thing that's kind of, I don't see bothering you, but, um, yeah, most challenging. I'd say right now we're in the focus stage. Um, okay. So when I, I think we op we opened up, um, we opened up talking about a new product where everything sort of diverges and now we're converging. Um, choosing where we converge on, as in like that focal point, is still a challenge, right? Because we're not there yet. We're converging, and so that, as an administrator of the company, is difficult to plan for, because if we're hiring somebody what do we put on the job description what do we need that person to do um, if we're looking for funding how do we explain it on a roadmap that changes on a weekly basis if we're recruiting partners how do we communicate a plan to get to our des desired result when that plan is still sort of in in movement um, It, it's all, I would say it stems from the focus. Our biggest challenge is the focus, communicating clearly where it is exactly we want to be um, in a year isn't so bad, but how do we get there? <laughs> what teams do we need? What skills do we need on the team? How many resources and what type of resources do we need? Uh, they could be financial, they could be operational, they could be partners, they could be um, human resources. Okay. That's, I think, the um, the big challenge that's in front of us right now. So in the past five weeks, we've practiced a lot. We've talked to a lot of people. We've refined the value proposition. It's starting to resonate and we feel it. Now it's about um, really building that capacity to, to deliver. So your value proposition has been clarified. Okay, that's cool. Um, and the, the, I'm going to ask a, a question or two on your here because your, the here is in movement and that's, that's the challenge, I think. So let's say yeah. your, your, your business standing still, I don't want to say like Kodak, but you've been there for eons and eons. You're a Michelin, eh? doing tires and whatever. So you have a, a business model in place. Strangely enough, whether you feel things are moving fast, you still have a business model in place. People are coming to the office, they're doing something, you're doing something. Um, there's a new here every day. And I think as every day moves forward, it feels like everything's moving, but it, it still doesn't matter because there's still a current business model that you have. Okay. And there's a current, or maybe not a current yet, but there's a um, customer experience um linked to that so whether it's new customers their initial experience is not maybe with your product it's more with the value you're proposing so they're already getting excited to say hey well that's cool man I, i really can't wait to see what's going on so let's 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 stretch it out to here so there's a check mark here i would say a, i would put a wiggle kind of there I would put like, uh, I think people are kind of looking forward to it, but they haven't yet experienced this new product. Uh, or maybe they have, but it's more like a better version. So it's the here, it's, um, it, it doesn't feel solid, but it's still there. It's just that, you know, you're not working with a finished, stable, mature product, which has been 50 years on the market. Uh, we're looking at something brand new which is breaking a lot of uh, things in terms of barriers and conceptions. So this is why you're, you're 
there's a lot of acceleration going on here. People are getting hooked on your product. They, they know you're holding on to something pretty cool. Um, so the vision here, I, uh, we, we looked at it together before this meeting and pretty solid. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. But, you know, what is your future business model? Like, how will your company function? What will it look like? How are people going to work together? So um, your target um, operating model, it's unclear-ish. It's like, hmm, okay. Come out to fonctionner. So how are you going to work, right? And then the target, um, you know, customer experience working with you in the future, how is that going to look like? I think it's not a complete question mark because your vision is fairly clear. I think your vision is linked to a target customer experience. Uh, but what the missing piece here, I think it's maybe like, well, simple questions. How many people do you need? How are they going to work together? Do you need designers, integrators? Do you need... Um, you know, how is your, do you need to grow an HR department? Do you need to, wh whatever. So at full maturity, like when this vision has landed and you're actually delivering what you promised in the vision, what will be that engine in that car, you know, transmission, whatever. So how is that going to function? So the, the guts of your business is here. And it, until that's a question mark, I mean, how are you going to bridge here to there until you figure out like those guts right right uh, uh just one one comment here is i i often disassociate the business model from the operating model um mainly because the business model i i immediately think of you know who are the partners you know what are the what are the prices in the package that we're we're selling that jives with the customers whereas the operating model is you know the the, the machine that's building all of that um, and making it possible but if we combine those two under business model in this you're, you're absolutely right it's that is kind of the challenge that we're going through right now right so out on your timeline at the top um if we're working on say a grant application you know we send a proposal out one week but two weeks later, it's already changed. And so what we do have to do right now is start, that, that's where we're challenged, right? Because a grant proposal or any other kind of partnership usually requires you know, a, a fairly detailed project plan. But the second we send it out, we're continuously moving forward towards the mission and the vision. And that project plan needs to be revised. Um, yeah. So I like this exercise because what it really kind of does is say, you know, let's pull out, focus on the model, less on the details, get people on board on that because that you're right that the customer experience that we're targeting is actually directly in line with the vision. That is at the moment what's selling people. Um, companies are experiencing pain <laughs> and that pain is basically translated into missed deadlines and high costs mm. in a nutshell that's that's it mm. um and, and it's just specific to your situation and I, I know like this this transposes a lot to different businesses in 2022 because i mean it's been it's only been a hundred and so years since uh you know the ford t <laughs> was invented right less than a century i mean so that's a lifetime for somebody who's healthy right so we're only a, one lifetime into uh, the uh, maybe less into this industrial revolution. So a lot of the visions, because a vision is essentially, you know, you're looking for something better about yourself, about your company, you know. So the something better, it's not really focused on, well, we should be more efficient. It's like, well, listen, we've we've, we've made some some major leaps into efficiency. And yes, we have uh, 4.0 and 5.0 and all that mumbo gum, you know, all, all, all those <laughs> terms to get a better engine, you know, a better way to deliver on this vision. But essentially, a lot of the visions that's happening right now, whether it's Nike, Amazon, Tesla, uh, yourself, everybody else, is really like, how can we really deliver on what people desire? You know, what do they actually want? What do they, how do they want to experience 
our product and service. And that's how you differentiate. So a lot of visions have to do with, uh, you know, the, 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 that experience, but it doesn't, it creates a good distraction that we tend to, you know, sidestep. It's like, oh, geez, well, how will the business function? Because you're right, total target, the target operating model is like the guts of the business. And obviously you have the, a uh, business model. It's like, well, how are you going to sell this thing? How are you going to approach people? Are you selling, you know, uh, software licenses? Are you selling access to something? Is it going to be totally free, but are you going to get royalties on the additional revenue they're going to make with your platform? I'm just making up stuff, right? So it's like, yes, obviously there's a business model. How do you generate that revenue and how do you interact with your customers and your partners? Uh, and there's a guts of the business as to Basically, there's no people, no business. So how will people function together? What type of people are required? Or where are they going to be located? Are you going to work with Pakistan, Africa, India, Europe, uh, Latin America? Like, how are you going to function so that this grows to deliver on that desire, right? And what's, what's, I was, my first reflex was going to go like, well, usually when you have those pieces in place, right? And they, they, they don't have to be like, this could be like crazy high level, like stupid high level. <laughs> like, well, I, I, we're, we're going to get some people working here and there, and then that's how they're going to work together. Fine. It's good enough. Right now, we don't have anything. Well, you, you probably have it, but I haven't seen it. So once you have a couple of uh, like a board game, once you have those tiles in place, now this is where it gets to be fun. But what's the in-between? And the in-between is essentially the first thing you're going to see. It's the gap. So I'm a good old engineer as myself. So um, the gap analysis, what is missing for you to get there? Is it resources? You know, is it people? Is it knowledge? Is it, you know, what are you missing? And right now you're living that. Um, uh, we're, def we're defining the gap. Exactly. Yeah. If this creates a vacuum, right? When the gap is unclear and you haven't done your homework, um, to really outline in a system, systematic manner, like here's exactly what's missing right now. And yes, that gap will be evolving. This is why this is very organic. But until you do your homework, this could be very exhaustive to live the vacuum of missing everything to get there, but not having a way to tackle that gap. And the way to tackle the gap, once you've identified everything that's missing to get there, resource people, cash flow, uh, knowledge, you know, then, and only then, do you start to plan and you build your strategic plan. And the strategic plan, it's both to meet on the vision by setting up this target operating model and business model to deliver, sure, on the experience, but by filling in the gaps. So your strategic plan, it's a simple thing. You're just filling in gaps over time. And over time, it's you determine how much time you're giving yourself to get there. Is it five years? Is it three years, two, one, whatever it is. So your strat plan is really those building blocks to get there. And the reason why we do that is because if you don't do that, you're going to go insane. Like <laughs> you're going to implode. You need to chunk it down to feasible pieces. And if two years too aggressive, push it to three, push it to five. It's not the amount of years, which is important in your specific uh, reality. It's just making sure you there's strides to it, which are feasible. And, and you get those small successes every day, week, month, year. So, you know, that's that's kind of like, I, I think you're here, you're living that void without this, without a clarity on this one. I get it. I get what you're trying to say. And our position is, it right now, if I'm being totally honest and, and transparent, it's we're living, we're living the gap. Absolutely. We're in definition of the gap as in 
like if if I go by our, our objectives and key results this quarter, what it is that we're actually doing is we're taking in all the user stories that we're we're collecting, um, building proof of concepts as to how we would address it. So we kind of learn mm. what are the problems that we're going to encounter. We don't have to solve them at scale. We just have to have an idea of is it a big problem, a small problem? Has it been solved before? Or is it total totally novel? Um, and so we are in, I, I guess, unknowingly, or at least in this vocabulary, defining that gap. We're trying to learn everything that we don't know um, incredibly quickly. Mm. The, I think the problem in our strategy plan right now is that we haven't allowed for that consolidation of information to turn into a strategy plan. So what I, what I see coming is actually that we just generate a lot of, we start documenting known unknowns because mm. we don't know what we don't know, but we'll have a pretty good understanding of what we actually do know and what we have discovered that we don't know. <laughs> um, but right now what we're probably going, well, actually right now what we're probably lined up to do is to immediately you know, say July 1st, start working on solving those problems as opposed to taking a step back and saying, okay, strategically, how do we make sure that we have the resources in place to solve this in the short, medium and long term and make sure it's aligned with the vision and delivered to our customers under the experience and the, the, the happiness model that we want them to have. Um, so it's a nice realization that although on paper we might be clear in what we're trying to accomplish, I think that the operating model of what we're trying to accomplish um, needs to account for a little bit of those lessons learned to turn into a strategy. Yeah, and you, you've made, I mean, you've built the most important pieces because that's where that's what you need first. The first pieces you need uh, essentially is this one and this one. So, uh, yeah. if, if you're in your basement and you're, let's say 15, mm -hmm. 16 years old and you want to build the dream, it's like understanding current value and setting a vision as to what is the future value you want to create. Um, uh, that's the start. And then things kind of, this is where things get broken down in different sequences, but the first kind of the masterpiece of this whole chef d'oeuvre um so you see it's right here those two so you've got those ma you know major uh, cards on the table uh this is where you 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 kind of linked them because your vision and values linked to experience it's like well you've made those links but what's missing is really the guts the guts of the business <laughs> like today sure why not but really for the future and I want to add this small tile here. I always add this one here. It's really, once you've done your gap analysis, this is about a couple hours of work at most. You've built your strat plan. That's maybe a day's work or two, three days, depending on, on how complex you want it to be. Um, but what's, what's really something to watch out for is the winning conditions. So the winning conditions for this to work out because a plan is only a plan right <laughs> um culture eats strategy for breakfast that's what uh, peter drucker used to say so um any plan it's it's only as good it's only it's only intentional so these are good thoughts these are happy thoughts right but execution so and and there are all the variables in place right to make sure that this plan sticks together and delivers on your intention and, 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 and evolves as things evolve as well. So like this is a moving target. So the vision mission is here, sure. And you're here along this lifeline, timeline, and you're inching away closer and closer. So what are, uh, what are the winning conditions for this plan to still be true in X amount of time, meaning what is the expiration date on this plan? You want this plan to be relevant still like in six months from now, maybe a year from now, 
or maybe three months. So it's like, what are the winning conditions so that this does not become um, décourageant? You know, you, you want people to be encouraged by everything you're putting together. You you want this to generate momentum. And and I can go on and on, but the winning conditions for things to stick um, are different, uh, like per people, per companies, but you need to think it through for your specific situation. What are the winning conditions for this to work out? Do you need somebody assigned to this? You know, is it you? You know, is it you like watching, being the hawk and making sure there's a governance in place to, to, to kind of review the plan, review the gaps, make sure it's linked, like who makes sure like this is implemented? Yada, yada, yada. I can go on and so forth. So it's essentially, um, and, and, and everything I've put here together, like this is uh, no surprise. This is what I call a transformation program. Like this is a full-time job and that's your job right now <laughs> as, as far as I understand it. How do you transform your business from here to there and make sure that those three blocks, you know, are in place. And then once those things are in place, you're the one kind of, you're the mastermind, the chef d'orchestre. So you're, you're, you're the maestro behind this thing, making sure that everything as things evolve, it's like, oh, we got a new product, new vision. Wait, let's modify the customer experience. Let's change the guts of the business. Oh, we're, we're, get, we're getting some dissatisfied customers right here because X, Y, Z surprise about the product. How do we do it? Do we need to adjust our vision, adjust the gap? Um, so the first time you're going to do this, this is going to be like very draft-y. And that's cool. You, don't, you never want this to be perfect. You just want this to be good enough to get things going. So that just to, my only message, like this is something that you have to dedicate your mind to maybe every Friday afternoon, you know, to say Friday afternoon, this is a sanity check. I'm going to run through those nine cards um, and figure out like, okay, what do I want to work on this Friday afternoon? What is the weakest spot hurting, hurting me the most? No, it's uh I was thinking about taking a screenshot of this, then I realized it's probably going to end up on YouTube. It's going to be, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but no, it's definitely, a, it's some good homework because yeah, there's more than enough tools available. And I mean, we're, we have to write this down. Um, I, I can't say that the strategy plan, at least in my experience is not a, you know, a one or two day thing. Um, at least not in the detail that, you know, we require it to move forward with our projects. Um, but it's it's everything that you've mentioned on here is a key ingredient to communicating the delta between the vision and delivering on it um and it's it i mean if it's called the transformation program or anything else that it as long as it encompasses a sort of here and there state mm -hmm. um you're right it's it's bringing it all together into a a plan that people can execute on. And I think this, this really does build on the first session we have together or we had together. Yeah. Um, we're here and that's it. You can, you kind of build this piece here. You resolve that by clarifying that and actually at the same time tackling the vision. That's right. And now we've, yeah. Okay. We've, uh, I think we've reached the hour. Yeah. Let me My uh, Slack messages are starting to explode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People are like, oh, you're free now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, exactly. So, Mike, this has been, uh, that was cool, man. I, 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 liked, I liked today's session. Me too. 